Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. What do I do with myself after I've been whiling away a weekend in a Waylon Corp wet dream, where men and women are outfitted like Ripley in that loader suit at the end of the movie Aliens, made sweet, sweet love, and you're the offspring? I make a review for The Surge, that's what I do, brought to you by Deck 13 and published by Focus Interactive. The Surge is a Dark Souls-style futuristic corpse run through a twisting labyrinth of technological constructions long past their upgrade dates. Let's see if rivet bolting a structural support to someone's man tit and then send them out into the deep dark unknown has the same pull as the strange gun and sword-soaked world of Bloodborne, the ancient mystical martial arts mastery of Neo, or the fantastic feeling of taking down twin badasses in a Dark Souls game. Let's do this. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for The Surge, Mad Cow Disease level design, difficulty approaching crush depth, and the ugly future of cybernetics. Graphics are up first. Here's the thing. Surge won't instantly amaze with massive cathedrals or huge hidden tombs, but instead in the layering of effects and feel across coffin-like and frankly claustrophobic level design, smart use of inertia and character animation, and absolutely rock-solid character control. You start out, First, I think, noticing it in the lighting, creeping down into the lower level and seeing the dirty steam of ancient machines piping out through floor vents with various lighting effects throwing shadows throughout the area. Surge can look surprisingly next level, even when showing you the most mundane of locations with the graffiti of displaced workers painted onto the walls and questionable fluids next to disturbing sleeping areas. Next, you're probably going to notice it in the weight and feel of every weapon and upgrade you collect, subtly changing the character and the feel. But here, heavy doesn't mean unresponsive, it just means heavy, which is a delightful difference that sometimes these games don't actually get right all the time, including Lords of the Fallen from this developer. And all this pays off with the animation as you sneak through the scattershot lighting of a decrepit tunnel complex, an enemy leaps out completely without warning, you dodge, and then swing what can only be described as a friggin' Osprey propeller blade into his dome like you're a Hadron Collider trying to split atoms. And it just looks great throughout all that. It's not just a movement though, it's the mood and how the game delivers little bits of information to you like watching to see if that crackle of electricity wicking off a robot's back is new and caused by the damage you just did, or just a sign that whoever designed them wanted them to look scary as hell. And in many ways, they are. And also the level design, each of these games always has an end around, a return to the breadbasket of safety, be that a shrine or a bonfire, or in this case, op centers. And in many ways, the surge does the same thing with elevators and lifts and false walls being busted out, returning you back to ops, and from that point on, allowing you to deep dive into the enemy's subterranean shanty towns at full speed. And I love that. But make no mistake though, this is a twisting and turning level design, like the player sprinting across the surface of a slowly rotating rotisserie chicken covered in scary and death. And it's not surprising to find a shortcut back to your base of operations that literally is five feet from the starting of the level and you had no idea was actually there, and I love that. Unfortunately, the game does have some issues. First, goddamn, it can get samey, it just can. And while that might be due to the technological monstrosity that this fictional company has created, at some point there comes a time when Robot Room number 77 looks a bit like Robot Room number 108. And despite this occurring many times with all these kinds of games, Surge hammers at home more than I would like, and that is directly connected to its less organic environment and its enemy sets. Also, unfortunately, texture work can be hit and miss with some character-based items looking like they were run through the elephant's skin filter before being applied. Now, all about how it runs. You have the Xbox One at 900p, the PS4 at 1080p, PS4 Pro with two choices, and the PC at whatever P your wallet can stand. The Xbox One and PS4 all shoot for 30 FPS and hit it most of the time. The PS4 Pro allows for aiming at 30 or 60 FPS with a raising in the resolution, depending on which one you choose. While, of course, the PC can run at any frames. Trust me though, set the PS4 Pro at performance mode, it looks fine, and the fluidity is essential in connection with Surge's movement system, and unfortunately that does mean the Xbox One and the PS4 Normal always felt a tiny bit sluggish. As a package, the Surge can look wonderful and it runs surprisingly well across all the platforms, but sometimes it can get a bit samey in its environments. Luckily, just when it does, you find a new weapon you tore off the side of a boss or ripped out of the socket of a dead enemy, and your moveset changes. It doesn't mitigate the issue, but it lessens its impact. Sound. Music and voice. Let's find out what's going on here. Stupid man, just 
stupid. Wanted to check the failsafe consoles, see what they recorded. And got separated from my crew, but I thought, Hobbs, don't give up now. You can make it. And that's when my rig gave out. Have a nice day, Warren. And of course, when it comes to audio categories, sound is going to be up first. This is actually surprisingly good. Not surprising because I think someone doesn't have the skill, but instead because taking into account the long tunnels, factory courtyards, and twisting nature of the construction, I assume the heavy machinery of a factory still going through its paces would have been a droning and somewhat audible bore fest. Instead, it's actually done very well with the different weapons whistling through the air and steel shearing off enemies' limbs with satisfactory clangs as a creak of fatigued steel echoes around you. However, strangely enough, there is one effect throughout the entire game that was really disappointing, and that's when you hit an enemy's unarmored spot, where the sampling comes freakishly close to the wet watermelon fully effect that it's actually used. There's just something about it that never exactly sounded right, never exactly sounded dynamic enough. But overall, I'd say sound as a package, pretty good. Music. So this is a mixture of in-your-face and so subtle you may not notice them tracks. If there's anything about the surge that I like without almost any negatives, it's the soundtrack. One part somber moody affair like a blanket of discordant unsettling tones were recorded just to make you wonder what was around the next corner to the AM radio level crunch of a vocal track that plays in your small safe area like an audible beacon in the soundscape. It's well done, it doesn't get in the way, and it adds mood, and the choice of tracks really fit perfectly with this dire future that they presented voice. So this is not bad from the uniquely emotive main protagonist constantly questioning the state of affairs and the locations to the various survivors you find within the area. It's not the brooding Shakespeare run through the Cthulhu generator we've seen in other titles like Dark Souls, and I could see some of the fans missing out on the theatrics a bit, but to me, what was being said overall meshed with the emotions of the situation and nothing made me think, yeah, this guy's just reading lines off a piece of paper. A special note here, the enemies, the human ones in particular, swinging weapons and screaming in ways that really betray how much it would hurt to have someone take a backo bucket and then rivet it to your face. It's tremendous, and in the dark of a room, hearing one of these dudes just screaming out in pain as they leap to attack you is really incredibly useful to impart a feeling of tenseness and danger. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Basically, you just started your new job at Creo Industries. Basically, think an Elon Musk-style corporation, and then... Boom, someone's wall of Tesla batteries explodes and you're left to pick through the quagmire of its ruins and figure out what happened. Now, from the very onset, the similarities and in some way differences to Dark Souls and other titles in this genre are apparent, and that's good. Bonfires leaking safety out like almost dead flashlights have been replaced by op centers in varying states of decay that you sometimes not only take over, but you have to restore to full usefulness. Now, one big difference here is gone are mobs of bosses and gobs of lower level enemies. Surge aims for a unique mixture of normal enemies that can send you off for a nighty night dirt nap in just a few hits, even when you're leveled up. Unique location encounters and an almost puzzle like feeling to some of their enemy groupings. And to save folks and to find out what happened and indeed to escape alive, you're going to need to fight a lot. Now, gone are weak and strong attacks like other titles, and instead here you have horizontal and vertical strikes that, depending on some enemies, might have a more or less difficult time to hit. Add to that the fact that you zip in and out with a dash button and you can also leap over low and high attacks and you have a layer of intricacy that feels both more pronounced but also more profound than some other Dark Souls style titles, but that'll depend on the user. Pressing particular buttons performs combos, which uses one of your meters, stamina, risks your other meter, health, but builds up your last meter, which is energy. And you're going to find that almost everything in the surge is an interplay of those bars both actively and passively. Energy can be used for various things like powering up one-use drones to attack enemies mid-fight or powering up other power-ups you have, and that cycle of risk continues. Stamina controls your ability to actually attack, sprint, run, and jump, and health controls your ability, well, to not be dead. So when you're fighting an enemy, you can just hammer away at their weak points, which you can find by using the targeting system built into your suit. Specific limbs, head, or body, depending on if it's armored or not, indicates how fast you can kill the bad guy, meaning it's much harder to take a foe down if you're friggin' whittling away at his arm that's covered in old car parts. But if you do, you have a chance for a finisher move, which means a Mortal Kombat-like end to the enemy as the targeted limb, head, or torso is lopped off and put into your bag of holding people parts plus four, so that it can then be used as is, or to craft items, or to craft weapons. Sooner rather than later, your character is going to look like he was dipped in super glue and then pitched full force down a hill covered in torn off parts of childhood TV shows. And that means tear assing through the levels like Frankenstein's Beast. And it's a constant reflection, I felt, of the character's state from start to finish. 
And speaking of terracing, if all this wasn't matched with a good movement and targeting system, it'd be a waste. But here, I have to say, Surge nailed it. There's a feeling of intimacy in the controls and dashing beneath the legs of an enemy spider robot to smash his supports out from under him and then dash away becomes the sign of a beginner. With more advanced players attacking, leaping over, attacking, attacking again, and forcing enemies into spaces they can't attack back from. It's instant, it's speedy, and it feels ultimately connected to the player. All the while, as you smash, slash, slice, stab, bang, bash, and bludgeon enemies, you're collecting tech scrap, which is the main item in the game used for cash or creating new items. Now, when you die, it remains where you died, and you have a specific amount of time to get to it before it disappears forever. If you do and you get all this back to ops, you can then upgrade your suit's overall power, resulting in stat increases and new chip upgrades being possible, or you can use it for upgrading weapons or armor or creating new ones. And I have to say, I love the chip system. One chip may give you injectable machines to heal damage, another might stop stamina from wicking away, and another might suck the blood from an enemy combatant during finishing moves, netting you not only the item, but extra life with each kill. The trade-off is that only some of these chips can be hot swapped, and others you have to return to ops to change. So that means you go from a buffed up heavy hitter that looks like he mated with a backo to a lickety split fragile death dealer augmented to move at light speed because he has a flux capacitor where his ball sack should be. Now, stealth has mattered in these kind of titles before. The sheer lethality of some of the enemy combinations here, though, meant that sneaking, going slow, and looking around every corner in Surge offered a sense of blankety malice across everything. And if there is anything that, to me at least, felt different in the Surge, it was indeed that. It's not that I didn't experience those moments of low life bar status in a swamp somewhere in Dark Souls. I did. But here, simply due to the confined construction of the environments, being waylaid by a team of enemies, all with different weak spots, and also surrounded in green goo that hurts you because its chemical constitutes are just labeled as stuff, it requires from the player a slightly different element of watchfulness and strategy. Then again, this is also where some of the weaknesses are. The fact is, is that many times you're traipsing down a tunnel, so you can traipse down another tunnel, and it's not that they don't look awesome or effectively scary metal tunnel-like. It's the fact that when you add in everything else, sometimes, you just want to know which elevator goes to ops and which drops you into the center of a swarm of enemies who are all in a rush to see what a player kebab tastes like. Also, never so blatantly have I found enemies waiting for me as I did in Surge, remembering that for the most part these are mentally unbalanced folks going around strange mimicries of their normal days. To find a dude who's effectively hidden behind some boxes like a Sunday morning cartoon couch fort just to leap out at you can seem incredibly contrived. It doesn't often happen, but man, when it does, you notice it right away. And also, while I love the suit bonuses for getting all of one of a kind of a manufacturer, and I like the idea of proficiencies being gained so that you don't have to drop to a different weapon if you don't want, and I really felt that having various stability modifiers in the armor worked wonderfully well, I also felt stymied by the entire gear system the entire time. Either in design or just type, I found a couple overall forms and functions that fit me, like the Lynx fast armor with a piston torn from the body of a long dead boss, but I always felt myself hoping for more gear types just to differentiate itself and then sort of looking at them and saying, eh, I'll just keep what I have. Now, when it comes to the length of the game, it's 20 hours for the main story and double that for you doing all the side missions and learning everything there is to know. And they also have an NG plus game. But I do feel this is the one place where a lot of Souls type game fans are going to have some problems with it, especially coupled with the sameness of the environments and the enemies. You know, not every game needs to be hundreds of hours and that length and the core gameplay here did feel fair. But in the end, I think a lot of people will be expecting more. Lastly, a bit about difficulty, it's very dynamic. Yeah, there are times that this was harder than I remember any Dark Souls game, and I can't say that it's all design, as I do feel some places were balanced taking a backseat to what looks or feels good. But like games in this genre, almost every time I died, I did feel like it was my fault. And lastly, the game, yes, does only have a handful of bosses. The grandeur of the boss battle is not at all what Surge is going for, so buyer beware. Fun Factor. Listen, in many ways, Surge is exactly what I hoped for, a game that was still Souls-like, but with a large number of subtle and not-so-subtle changes that really made you realize that some of this formula can be adjusted without aggressively breaking the whole and, of course, a new and different environment to engage in. It does feel unique. I love the balancing of the three traits, the upgrade system, the dynamic scale of difficulty, the angry insect hive level design, and the way side quests were doled out. But I wasn't a fan of the occasional monster closet design, the feeling of sameness that preceded exploration, and the overall lack of narrative cohesion, and also, frankly, the smaller than expected grouping of enemies to fight. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, with Deep Deep Sale replacing rent on the PC. This is a wait for a sale. I liked a lot of this game, a ton of it, but the repetitive just overall look 
as well as the way, even though the enemies were very fun to fight, the fact that it was the samey feeling of fighting those enemies over a long period of time, just the way the game was designed, sort of hit and miss for me. So that's it for me. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.